Instead of paying $365 to dine at Love Mazen Park, you could pay $6 to make this shrimp dish at home. Then I'm gonna show you how you can take this dish to its true three-star potential. For the gnocchi, scrub one and a half pounds of russet potatoes then cover in water. Add in seven grams of salt and bring to a simmer over medium heat. Cook the potatoes until tender, 45 to 50 minutes, using a paring knife and towel to remove the skin. Then pass the potatoes one at a time onto a sheet tray. Make sure that the potatoes fall into a single layer. This will help the potatoes be light and fluffy instead of dense. Leave the rest of the potatoes in the pot to stay warm. This will make it easier to peel and pass. Allow them to cool to room temperature. Dust your counter with flour and spread the potatoes into a single layer. Evenly spread out 100 grams of flour, 4 ounces of butter, 4 egg yolks, 10 grams of grated parmesan, nutmeg with 18 grams of salt. With a pass card, use it in a choppy motion to fully incorporate the ingredients. Do not knead the dough. This will help prevent it from becoming dense. Use the remaining 30 grams of flour to prevent the dough from sticking to the bench scraper. Place onto a sheet tray with parchment paper, then flatten out to 3 quarters of an inch thick. Cover with plastic wrap, then refrigerate for 2 hours. To form the gnocchi, dust the counter with some flour and place the gnocchi dough on top. The book says to cut lengthwise into 3 quarter inch strips. Using a bench scraper, cut the ropes into 3 quarters inch pillows then roll each pillow into a sphere. Using the back of a fork, roll the gnocchi down with the tip of your thumb to create the grooves. However, I found it best to weigh out the gnocchi on a scale to seven grams. Roll into a ball and then use a gnocchi board for the grooves. Not only do I think this looks nicer, but I found it easier than using a fork. The boards are fairly cheap. I have one linked in the description. Lightly flour some trays and place the gnocchi on. The ones on the left are the EMP way, the ones on the right are my way. Refrigerate up to 8 hours. This recipe will make extra gnocchi, so the best way to store them is to freeze them individually. You can place them into a storage container and keep them in the freezer 3-4 to four months. For the potato confit, place 10 fingerling potatoes, add in one sprig of thyme with 2 crushed garlic cloves, and cover with extra virgin olive oil. Cover with foil and bake at 275 degrees Fahrenheit until they are tender, about 90 minutes. Then strain and reserve the oil off to the side. Peel the potatoes using a paring knife. The skins should easily come off. I found that they naturally split down the middle. Store them in the oil until you are ready to use them. For the fingerling potato chips, bring up 8 ounces of water to a boil and add in 5 grams of salt during till it dissolves. When I worked at the Modern, we made chips very similar to this, but we would do a 2% ratio of salt to water, which I think is a little bit easier to remember. Slice the fingerling potatoes into paper thin slices into the brine. Stir to make sure that they are all completely submerged, then allow it to come to room temperature. Drain the potatoes from the brine, then pat dry. Fry at 325 degrees Fahrenheit in small batches until GBD, golden brown and delicious. Once the chips are cooled, store them in a container with a paper towel and a tight fitting lid to help keep them crunchy. If the beginning gets soggy, you can place them in the microwave for 15 to 20 seconds and they'll be crispy again. For the candied lemon peel, use a peeler to remove the zest from a lemon. Remove any remaining pith, then trim the ends up so that they are even. Cut into strips measuring an eighth of an inch by three quarters of an inch. Place the zest strips into a pot, cover with cold water, and bring up to a simmer then drain. Repeat this process two more times, then add the peels back into the pot. Add in 100 grams of sugar with 100 milliliters of water. Bring the zest to a low simmer, then cook for two hours over a low heat. Cool at room temperature in the liquid. The extra simple syrup can be saved for cocktails. For the celery root puree, trim in quarter inch dice four ounces of celery root. Smash one garlic clove and wrap with one sprig of thyme in a cheesecloth. Add in four ounces of diced celery root with three ounces of half and half, the sachet, and bring up just under a boil. Reduce the heat to a low simmer and cook until tender, 20 to 25 minutes. Remove the sachet, add in celery root to the blender with eight grams of cubed butter and blend. Fats emulsify the puree, making it smoother. Taste and season if needed. Pass the puree 
puree, then finish with zest from half of a lime. Best way to store this is to bring a small pot of water to around 135 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you can place the celery root puree right in. This will stay warm for hours. For the celery stalks, use the stalks from the celery root. Trim the ends of eight celery stalks at a bias. Bring a pot of water to a boil and season it like the ocean along with an ice bath. Cook the celery leaves until tender, about one minute. Cool in the ice bath, then drain and reserve off to the side. For the parsley, Pick nice leaves of flat leaf parsley, rinse them in ice water, then drain and set aside. Make sure you take the time to pick out nice parsley so that you don't have to pick through garbage when it's time to plate. You're going to need five leaves per plate. For the calamari, cut the top inch away, then trim up the calamari. Split lengthwise and cut into vertical strips. Give them a rinse and set aside. You will need four ounces for four portions. The recipe calls for baby calamari, which I couldn't find, but I found by just cutting off an inch from the top you can get something that resembles baby calamari and if you cut the bodies vertical they get this really cool curl where if you cut it horizontally or it rings it just looks kind of boring for the shrimp start by removing the head using the tip of your fingernail start from the tail end and remove all the legs this will make it easier to remove the shell break the tail shell then pull the flippers to remove place in the ice water to rinse then using tweezers insert them into the tail and pull out the vein. Give one final rinse and set aside. Upgrading your shrimp to something like these spot prawns will really take this dish to the next level. Clean the prawns the same way as you do the shrimp, but since these were live, I placed them in ice water first, which will put them into a coma-like state. The females had eggs, which can be removed with a spoon and turned into a shrimp oil. The prawns have a sweeter flavor than the shrimp, almost like a cross between lobster and shrimp, but they're $50 a pound compared to the shrimp that are $6 a pound at Costco. You'll need a total of eight shrimp for the four portions. To make the orange beurre blanc, reduce 118 milliliters of white wine by one fourth. Add in 88 milliliters of orange juice with 14 milliliters cream and reduce this by half. Turn the heat down on low and add in 24 ounces of cold cubed butter, three to four cubes at a time. Finish with salt to taste and a pinch of espalette. Adding cold cubed butter a little bit at a time will help prevent the sauce from getting too hot which could break it. If you happen to break the sauce, warm up a splash of cream with one ounce of butter. Then slowly whisk in the broken sauce a little bit at a time. You can also reheat butter sauces like this. To plate, bring a pot of salted water to a boil, then add in the gnocchi. Once they float, give them five extra seconds, then transfer to a pan with half an ounce of chicken stock. Add in half an ounce of butter to create a glaze and season to taste, then set aside. For the confit potatoes, strain them from the oil. Heat half an ounce of chicken stock in a a pan over medium heat and warm the potatoes. Add in half an ounce of butter to glaze the potatoes, then place on a tray. To finish the celery stalks, heat half an ounce of chicken stock up in a pan, then add the celery. Once warm, add in half an ounce of butter to glaze. You can use the same pan for all three. Season the shrimp with kosher salt. Place the prawns in the orange beurre blanc and poach at 155 degrees Fahrenheit for two to three minutes. Remove when all the gray is gone and the shrimp have just turned pink. Season the calamari and add them in for one minute. Then remove from the beurre blanc. Trim up the prawns so that they lay flat and place them all on a tray. Cover the seafood with some of the beurre blanc and place under a low broiler for 30 seconds or until everything is warm. Place down two tablespoons of the celery root puree. Then use the back of a spoon to spread. Place down two prawns, three gnocchi, and four pieces of calamari. Place down two stalks of celery, three confit potatoes, five parsley leaves, five fingerling potato chips, and four strips of candied lemon peel. Tasting notes are in the description. Watch this video next to see the French Laundry's $4 annulati.